chapter 2, you that have Bibles with you, if you don't, just lean over to somebody and say, can, can I read with you? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. I did that many years. <laughs> and I finally broke down and bought one. <laughs> and didn't understand a thing about it. <laughs> I didn't all send all those D and yea and thou and cometh. and I tried to put that one day on, the, on this. I was looking at, looking for, and I was writing the word cometh on my phone, and, and it kept saying, putting a red on it. I said, why cometh, cometh? Because it's not, that's King James. It don't know nothing about cometh. It knows about come, somebody came, but not cometh. It, 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 it. So Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 8, uh, it be, uh, well, let me start it um, at verse uh, 4. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. Follow me very closely. He said, but God, who is rich in mercy, for with his great love, wherein where he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, that means spiritually dead, has quickened us, made us alive, together with Christ, by grace are you saved on the cross, and has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Why did he do that for? That in the ages to come, see, he might show us the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. Now, we've seen some of his kindness. We've seen some of his richness, his love. But we haven't seen nothing yet. In the ages to come means when we get to heaven, which is a planet. It's a planet. It's not some, you know, little place. It's big. It has to be big for millions of people that have gone there over thousands of years. So it's got to be bigger than the earth, huh? Would you say it's got to be bigger than the earth? And so now, so we're going to talk about that when Jesus finished his redemption. Notice it said, he sat down, means he came out of hell. Not for, he didn't lose, he didn't sin. He went there for you and I, so we don't have to go. Then when he wrote, when he came up, it was a representation that I came up. And then when he sat down, that's why it said we're seated together. When he sat down, I sat down with him. When he sat down, you sat down with him. Now what is the act of sitting? The act of sitting is, mean, is done. We're, we're done. So if, if we get revelation of this, that it's already done, that Satan is defeated, that everything we need is already here, but you have to get revelation of it. You can read it, and you can, get, you can read it, but not get the benefits. Why? That's because it's progressive revelation. Now let me give you this other one, then we'll get into the teaching. Notice he said... We were seated, we're seated together with him. Notice it said he raised us up. We were raised up with him. That's Paul teaching us that this already happened. Now look what Paul says in, in, in chapter 3. Look what Paul says. He already told us we're seated together. We're raised up together with him. We're seated together with him. Now listen what Paul said because he knows he taught these people, but just because he taught them doesn't mean they got it. Because look what it says, further revelation. Because this is... We read this in chapters, but see, God didn't write the book in chapters, the Bible in chapters. It's a letter. You don't get a letter from people in chapters. You know, you get a four-page letter and say, chapter one, no. No. chapter two. No, it's letters, pages. So these are letters. And if you really understand, they're love letters. These are love letters. So you got to read your mail. You know, if you get mail at home, you just take it and, and, and throw it away. You might miss one of these days that somebody sent you a love letter with a, a thousand, ten thousand dollars. But see, since you didn't read it, well, it wasn't his fault that you didn't read it. So if you don't read your mail, this love letter, it's not God's fault that you don't know how much he loves you and how you're benefited from his love. These are letters. These are not chapters. So for in this further letter, Paul says this here. Look what he says. I just told you this. Now here in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14. Because of what he told him, he said, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. What did he pray for us? He's praying for us. He said, I pray he said, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So where he's going to talk to you is inside of you. He's not going to talk to your brain. See, he's not going to talk to your mind because your mind can't handle the wisdom of God. 
So he's got to talk to your spirit that can handle the wisdom of God. See? You understand? If I go to France, I would have to take somebody with me to show me how, what it, to let me know what that person's saying to me. You see, I, I wouldn't be able to just walk around France and do anything I want to because I don't understand their customs. Right. So your brain and your mind doesn't understand the customs of God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. What do you mean it doesn't understand them? Because, see, the vocabulary of, 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 of his kingdom is says, I can, I'm able, there's no problem, there's no lack here. See, our vocabulary is, I, I'm not going to make it this week. See, that, that, that's not known in the kingdom. So you have to talk to the Holy Spirit that understands there's no lack, and he'll talk to your spirit yes. because your mind says, I don't have no money. I'm sick. I'm bitter. He said, yeah, but I'm not talking to you, mind. I'm not talking to you, brain. I'm right. talking to your spirit. Yes. Can I take you to Holy Ghost school? Can I take you to Holy Ghost? Can I take you to Holy Ghost University? Can I take you to the spirit? Can I take you to the spirit realm where your mind and your where your mind and your brain is not invited? Can I do that to you? Then let see. Right now, just put your brain aside and your mind aside, and let's go to the kingdom of God, who knows all about you. Okay. See, I need all the help from the Holy Ghost to speak this to you. See, I got notes, but if you go into this paper and see what's on that note, and that's what I just said, it's not on there. It's not on there. I'm speaking to you, man, from another planet. I'm speaking to you now from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I am not speaking to you from my life experiences, because if we go to my life experiences, you won't want to listen to me. I'm coming to you from a fresh revelation and a fresh meeting with the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm coming from. Because what I'm telling you, I need it. What I'm speaking to you, I need it. So Paul is saying here, listen to what he said. What was he praying? Verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your heart, not in your mind, in your head, by faith. That you be rooted and grounded in love. That you may a, be able to comprehend. Watch this. What, with all the saints, what is the breadth, length, depth, and height? Paul is saying, I know I told you you're seated in heavenly places. I know I told you you were raised up with him. But now I'm praying that you get to know what I really told you. I want you to know what God really told me to tell you. Yes. See? So we see that Jesus, there in Matthew 20, 17, uh, rather John chapter 20, verse 17, Jesus uh, goes into hell and he comes up, and look what he said. Suddenly, that's the way Jesus is. Suddenly, he'll just appear to you. Suddenly, he'll just talk to you. And, and, he, and he came, and suddenly, in John chapter 20, verse 17, Jesus suddenly appeared to Mary after his resurrection. There, he, All of a sudden, he appears to Mary. And she fell at his feet, and he said, watch what he said to her. Touch me not, for I am not yet, I am not yet ascended unto the Father, in other words, he died a lamb, but he arose a high priest of the new covenant. See, he died a lamb, but he arose as a high priest. See, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord over sickness and disease and spiritual death. Jesus is, is Lord over sickness and disease see, and sin. But he's a high priest of your confession. I'll say that again. He's Lord over sickness and disease and lack. But he's the high priest of your confession. That whatever you believe and say from your heart, he takes it to the Father and the Father will give it to you. Now listen to what I'm saying. So Jesus went in with his blood in Hebrews 9, Hebrews 9, 12. I'm just getting the foundation here and I'll... Bear with me. Hebrews 9, 12 said, No yet with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. See, he didn't take the blood of a bull and a goat. He said, I'm giving you my blood. See, he entered in once and for all. See, if you understand that once and for all, oh, glory to God, you're covered. Once and for all. He went in there once and for all. See? Hey? What did he get? Eternal redemption. Means you're, when we get revelation that we're eternally redeemed, you won't have to be afraid of sickness and disease and an early grave because you've been redeemed 
from, from sickness and disease. You say, well, I know people that are Christian and ministers that are, that, 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 that they, why, how come they died? Because they didn't get revelation of an eternal redemption. They didn't hear what Paul said, that I'm praying that you may know the length, the depth, and the height, and the width. You know what that means? You can go as far as you want to, to the left, and you'll never get to the end of left. You can go as far as you can to the right, but you'll never get to the end of right. You can go as high as you want to up, but you'll never get to the end of up. You can go as long as you want to down, but you'll never get to the end of down. That's how much wisdom God says I have. And he's praying that we get it. We can't get it here. I said we can't get it here. But, but what we're learning here is so when we get to heaven, we, we, at least we let us understand a little bit. Yes. Do, yes. do you see? In other words, we can get a little bit of heaven living down here. Yes. A little bit, huh? That little bit was a long way. But with God, little is a lot. With God, little is mega. Huh? So, so we see that he said he came up a high priest. Now it says... His own blood, when his own blood was accepted by God the Father. Why? Because, see, if I would have went to Father God with my blood, he said, you can't enter in. Your blood's polluted. How is it polluted? When Adam sinned, his blood became polluted, and you were in his loins. See, so when you come to ask me for forgiveness, I can't do that for you. I love you, but I can't forgive you. I love you, but I can't forgive you. Why? Because I can only accept something that's pure in the blood of my son Jesus was pure. And that's the only one, only one I'm going to accept. And then he said, God said to Jesus, he said, Jesus, there's a man going to call Joseph Rodriguez. He's going to be down there in, 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 in the year 2000 and, and he needs you. He's a rank sinner. He's a liar. Uh, he, 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 he makes up a lot of wrong things. He's a deceiver. He said, he's on his way to hell. Would you please go down there and die for him? Because his blood is polluted, and I, I can't let him get near me because, see, he's sin. He's got sin all in him, and his body's got sin. And if I go down to myself to talk to him, his body will disintegrate because, see, I'm too pure, and, and, and he is not, and his body will disintegrate. His body will melt. His body will just disappear, but his spirit will have to go into hell. So, so would you go down there for there in a man's suit, in a human suit, and, and, and go in there? So when you get near him, he won't disintegrate. I said, he, he won't disintegrate. Now, that wasn't in my notes, but that's the Holy Spirit speaking. Don't ever get the idea that you can teach the Bible. You may read the Bible and get up and give a t good talk about it, but you can't teach the Bible. The only one that can teach the Bible is the Holy Ghost. That's it. No, 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 no. You can give a good talk. You can go to speech class and get all the words together. But all the words together can't get to the, into a person. You got to get to their spirit. And Jesus, what happened when Jesus went to the cross? Let me give you some things. Why? What happened after Jesus went to the cross? Because Jesus went to the cross, listen to what I'm going to say, he became our mediator. Because of Jesus going to the cross, now Jesus not only is the son of God, he not only is the one that died on the cross, Jesus now becomes your mediator. What is that? Jesus is the mediator of a new covenant. In other words, he'll teach you what this Bible is saying by the Holy Ghost. This is a contract. It's not a Bible. It's a contract. It's a new covenant. And, and, and God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit can tell you what this is all about. He'll take you to Isaiah 55, 11, because I'll say, you know what, Lord? I think I'm going to do this. I, I, I think I'll do this because I'm behind on this. Uh, uh, here's what I feel about it. Here's, here's what I think about this. Uh, about my children. Here's what I think about my son, my daughter. Here's what I think about moving out of the state. Here's, here's what I think about uh, what it says here. And, and then 
I go to the contract and say, Holy Spirit, what do you got to say? Holy Spirit says, well, Isaiah 55, 11 says that my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. So, Joseph, I really don't uh, appreciate what you say that you're thinking because what you're thinking, it's not going to do it. Because your thinking got you here to this place where you need me. And, and since all that thinking, you were sick, you were bewildered, you were behind, but now you're born again. So all the thoughts that you had before, he said, just drop them, and here's my thoughts, and here's my way. <laughs> See, that, that's what the Holy Ghost would tell me. All right? So, so that's what it means. He's a mediator. He says, here's how to think. Here's what you should think. Here's what you should do. Then he said, now, and I said, well, Lord, uh, what else you got to say about, about what, I'm looking at the situation. I'm behind on this. I'm lacking in here. Okay, let's go to Genesis 22 because I'm your mediator. And in Genesis 22, 17, here's what God says through the Holy Ghost to me. In blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. I will multiply the seed of the stars of the, uh, uh, of the heaven as the sand which is upon the seashore. And your seed, see, as children, children, shall possess the gates of the enemy. Okay, I'm all set then, Lord. You mean I'm going to have it made? I'm, yeah, I'll multiply this and multiply this and multiply that. And you and your children, children, you, you, yeah. Do you see that? But my mind is saying I'm living in Saginaw. They call it the worst city. They can't come back. He said, but you're not living in the city. You're living in me. Remember, I'm not, remember, remember, I'm not talking to your head. Remember, I'm not talking to your body. Remember, I'm not talking to, I'm talking to you about the new contract. So if you just hold there in Saginaw, what you call Saginaw, where your human bodies and your human minds are, and you just stay there with my thoughts and, and my, my, what I just told you, I'll multiply you, and you, you, you'll stand out and you'll say, where'd this man come from? Can you see that? Because see, your Lord is, is there. Where? In heavenly places. Where's your Lord? In you? Yes. How can he be up there and in you? I don't understand it. He didn't tell you to understand it. He told you to believe it. Yes. Because see, if you try to understand it, you'll try to figure it out here. He didn't, tell you to, he didn't tell you to understand it. He just said believe it. See, if you believe it, you'll see it. Yes. See, I said, I, when I see it, I believe it. That's over there in the in your realm where you live. But if you believe it, you'll see it. See? see? Do you see that? Yes. Now, now, now watch what he says. Now because he died on the cross for you and I, look what he said. Now that same spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, Romans 8, 11, that same spirit that went down there, which is the Holy Spirit, Jesus is down there in hell. I don't know how many demons there is, but there had to be millions and maybe billions down there. And, and, and Satan himself. And, and, and Jesus is there. And God the Father says to the Holy Spirit, or God the Holy Spirit says, Okay, Holy Spirit, go get him. Go set him free. So the Holy Spirit, at the speed of thought, comes from heaven to hell and, 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 and quickens Jesus. And Jesus said, Okay, I'll take over now. Go ahead, Holy Ghost. And he tells Satan, Give me the keys or your authority of death, hell, and the grave. You are no longer going to kill people when you feel like it. The grave is not for them when you feel like it. I'm taking that authority. And he turned around and he tells all the demons, he said, he's, he's defeated. And so are you. Huh? Can you see that? And then they said, well, yeah, but that was Jesus. Yeah, but keep reading because Romans 8, 11 says, if that same Holy Spirit that went down into hell and quickened him, and Satan and all those millions and billions of demons couldn't stop him, that same spirit lives in you. What's your problem? What's, what's your problem? See, 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 see you got to believe this. You can't just hear this. It won't change your life by hearing it 50 times today. It'll change your life if you believe it. I said, if you believe it, it'll change your life because that same Holy Spirit won't let nobody do nothing to you. That's why sometimes you see me and, and, and I don't apologize, just all of a sudden take off running. I'm running from joy instead of running from the devil. Oh, 
Because of Jesus dying on the cross, he becomes your intercessor. What do you mean intercessor? Jesus makes intercession for you. He's up in heaven that whatever you need, intercessor means one standing in the behalf of somebody else. What I can't do, I, I begin to say, I can do all things through Christ. And I, I thank you, Lord, for this success and for this money and for this healing. I, I thank you for this miracle. And, the, and G Jesus goes over there and says, Father God, uh, Joe down there believed and said this. And he said it out of chapter so-and-so, out of that love letter. He believes it. And God says, give it to him. Huh? He said, what is man that you should be afraid of him? Means humanity, means the wisdom of a man which is sensual and devilly, that you should be afraid of their predictions and their news. Uh, see, when, the, when you hear news, they're not news. It can't be news if it already happened. How can it be news if it already happened? It's not new, huh? Because it already happened. We just got ahead in second hand, so how can second hand be new? Are you listening? Oh, no, no, no. When God tells you something, it's fresh. Not only that, when God gives you something, it's not like fruit that once you get it and you let it sit on the table, after a while, it'll begin to rot. See, when God gives you something, it stays fresh. It's always fresh. It's always fresh. That's why you and I have got to come to a place where we humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God means don't you think you know everything. See, what you got to do is stay green because if you, if you ripe, you'll rot. If you ripe, you will rot. So stay green because if you're green, you can't ripe and you won't rot. Stay green. Why? You won't rot. Stay green. But if you write, you're right. If you say, I know, I know, you're, you're rotting. Ah. But if you say, I know to this degree, but I know there are more degrees. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I know there's something else. I'm going to meet with somebody that knows more than me. Yeah. Glory to God. This is all happening because of what Jesus did. Also, then Jesus becomes your advocate. What is an advocate? It's a lawyer. It's a lawyer that takes your case to the Supreme Court. No, no, not in Washington. It takes your case to the Supreme Court in heaven. And, and, and the judge of the Supreme Court is your father. And Jesus is your lawyer. And the prosecuting, prosecuting attorney. Are you getting this? It's all in your behalf. And the, process, and the lawyer said, don't say nothing. What should I say? Say what's over there in your love letter. That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Say over there what it says in that scripture. That you confessed your sin. And, and, and when you say that, then the blood, as soon as you confessed it, the blood of Jesus cleansed you from all unrighteousness. So you're sitting here a free man. So I'm just talking about a free man. And God said, God the Father said, let him go. Let him go. <laughs> 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 Woo, glory to God. I say glory to God. Not guilty. Not guilty. Because, see, once you sin and confess Jesus as Lord and tell him you sin, the moment you say, I confessed it, he doesn't remember it no more. He chooses not to. Now, the devil will come and tell you, you sure were a, sure, a, a sore sight yesterday. You know what you did. I don't know what. I didn't do nothing. See, and then if he takes it to tell, goes to the father to accuse you, he said, did you see what Joseph Rodriguez did uh, yesterday around 3 o'clock? He said, I don't have no record of him doing nothing. See, that because of what Jesus did, this can happen. This is happening to you and I. Also, Jesus is the guarantee of all that he, it's in the Bible. All the, it's a guarantee. See, the world you buy something gives you 90-day guarantee. Uh -huh. 
You buy a car, it's 100,000 miles, 10 years, but you only better drive 10 a year and make sure that for the next 10 years you get just 10,000, yeah. then they'll guarantee it. But Jesus said, I guarantee it as long as you live. Yeah, that's right. Because what I give you, he said, no man can give you. So he's the guarantee of a powerful life in, here on earth. See? Now, but you, you have to believe it. See, what I'm teaching you, what I'm, I'm, I'm studying, when I was studying that, all, I was, and then the Holy Spirit said, now you're, you're, you're getting this information, now it's revelation. He said, Joseph, do you believe the revelation? See, he's telling me. He's telling me. Okay, hot shot, do you believe this? Why? Because you got to believe it too. You got to believe it so I can be your advocate. You have to believe it so I can be your intercessor. You have to believe it so I can be your guarantee. You have to believe it so I can be your righteous. Why? Because if you don't believe it, then you don't have no protection from that Satan that you can't see. He's invisible. And you will not even know the people that he's using to send to you to destroy you. But if you believe what I said, when somebody, some con man, some woman tries to con you, my Holy Spirit in you, the advocate, the standby, the righteous one, the guarantee says, beware, huh? it's an angel of light. Uh, that's an angel of light. That's not God. That's not Jesus. That's not the Holy Ghost. That's a Bible quoting demon in that individual. That's my guarantee. That's my protection. That, 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 that. See, all that on the cross is helping me to stay here and, and get out of harm's way because, see, I will not be deceived. There's a lot happened on that cross. That we'll know more about it when we get to heaven. See, and then also Jesus becomes my redemption. He says in Galatians 3.13 that he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What is the curse? Spiritual death. Uh -huh. Means I'm, I don't, I'm going to heaven. I'm, I'm redeemed from that. But we're redeemed from sickness and disease. I have to believe it though. I have to believe it. I have to believe it. You know, I have to believe it. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. I'm redeemed from poverty. Well, I know a lot of Christians that are, that, that are in poverty. Yeah, because they don't believe it. They don't believe, uh -huh. believe it. See, they're, you know, you, you, if you get into some sororities, you know, and, and, and the secret society, they'll let you in, but, but you have to pass some tests to get in there. And then they'll give you some code and some password, and only you know the password and the code, and only you know when the meetings are, and, and because of that, then you get the benefits of that society. See? Well, what Jesus says, the only way you're going to get in is by the code. Confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. And the only, now that you're in, there is a language that nobody else knows, and that's the Holy Ghost. And when you read the scriptures, the Holy Ghost says, here's the secret code. Here's what it means. And, and see, where, where a, a, non, a person that's not born again, he's not in this secret society of God. He'll look at it and he said, I see, that's not what it says there. That's what it says there. Yeah, that's what it says to you. But see, you're not in that inner circle that we are. So you're getting this from your brain and your mind. See, but, but see, this is for spirit people. Yeah. Well, I'm a spirit, yeah, but you're alienated from, the, from God. So you really can't get the truth what it says there. <laughs> You can get a truth from here and here, but you're not getting the truth here. Why? Because you don't have no truth in you. See? Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth and the life. Glory to God. And so when God gives you the truth, he gives you the way and he gives you the life. Do you see that? All that is happening when he's on the cross. So Satan now, because you're, I'm redeemed, you're redeemed. Now watch this. Satan now has no dominion over you. He has no dominion over you. Why? Meaning this. Because now you can sense his presence. You can sense the presence of God and you spend so much time with God. You spend so much getting stuff from God, so much blessing from God, so much anointing, so much freshness, that when Satan sends a messenger, you say, oh, Jesus. Right away the Holy Spirit says, uh-uh, no. That person smiling, talking, doing all that, he said, uh-uh. Uh -uh. Now, now, wait a minute. See, now, now, what do you do? God says, pray for them. Uh -huh. 
that person that's been used, he, that's sometimes people don't even know being used by the devil. And God loves that person that's being used by the devil. How do you know? He loved me and I was being used by the devil. Loved me enough to have patience and wait for me till I came to my spiritual senses to ask him to come into my life. So if he loved me as a ranked sinner, see, then he loves that person that's coming against me, that's talking about me. Do you see that? So, so he's, my redemp- he's my redemption, see? And so I say, okay, Lord, you put me in this. I already got it made. I'm going to heaven. No, I don't know everything about the Bible, but I know I'm going to heaven. He said, yeah, but you didn't know when the devil was using you, huh, son, right? He said, but I did, so I sent someone to help you. Yeah. He said, now that person doesn't know they're being used by the devil, so, so I'm sending you to help them. Right. How do I do this? Pray for them. Right. Worship them. Yeah, Worship me and then pray for them. Yeah. yeah, but I talked to them. They didn't listen to me. Good. I don't want them to listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> He said, you, you just plant the seed, and maybe 10, 15 people, 10, 15 people later on, 10, 15 people later on, the 15th person will talk to them, and they'll say, I, I want what you got. And they'll come and tell you that you spoke to them three years ago for two hours and 20 minutes, and they didn't listen. And, and this person talked to them for three minutes, and they got saved. Why? Because it wasn't that person speaking to them. It was the Holy Spirit convincing them. <laughs> You can talk to your child, to your wife, your husband, till the blue in the face. You know, while you're talking and they're playing basketball, they're, out, they're, going, they're going to Paris. They're all over the place. They're in there, but not, they're, they're not listening to you. See, because the Holy Spirit was telling you, just plant the word. And then one day, without them even knowing, they'll come across some person. Some, some person that they don't even like. They can't stand them. But the Holy Ghost is going to use them. And they're going to get born again. Amen. See, you're not redeemed just for yourself. You're redeemed for, for, to help people. Yes. Now, so now we're redeemed, huh? Yes. Now, what a great day that is when one becomes conscious on, on the inside. What do you mean? Become God inside minded. God inside minded. I was telling my wife last week, we come to prayer every, every, every Saturday. And I was telling her, I said, babe, do you realize where we're going? And she said, what do you mean? She said, I said, we're going to go spend some time with the smartest supernatural being in the whole universe. Yeah. We're going to be in his presence. Yeah. That's where we're going. Yeah. Imagine that the smartest man in the world, the smartest man in the whole world, uh-huh. and the richest man in the world uh-huh. would allow you to come and talk to him one hour. One hour. Now, he could send you a CD, you know, send you a teaching, a DVD. But to have him say, I want you to come be with me every Saturday and just ask what you want. And that's what we do every Saturday. It, we, we don't come in and just, you know, pray, 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 pray. Because praying is talking with God. See, because of what he did on the cross, we can do that. Because he said, come boldly to the throne of grace. So him dying on the cross allows you now to go to God. Not, not you know, can I talk to you, Lord? No. You know, Lord, Lord, I'm not worthy. Yes, you are, because I made you worthy. Uh-huh. See, because him dying on the cross, you can just go boldly and sit on daddy's lap. He's God, but he's daddy. He's God, but he's daddy. See, you got to get to know him as God and reverence him, but you got to get to a point where one day he's daddy. He's daddy. Oh, I love when he's daddy. I love when he's God, but I love when he's daddy. I need a lot of times when I need to talk to daddy. Ah, glory to God, hallelujah. <laughs> Why? Because he begins to open a treasure box after another treasure box after another treasure box after another treasure box. And all, all of that's in that treasure box is yours. All that's in that treasure box is mine. Meaning, I don't have to struggle to get wisdom because it's there on tap. Now, let me use this tap because some of us, we weren't born again all the time. We, we weren't in church all the time. You went, to a, 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 you went into a bar and they had some beer on tap. So you didn't have to beg for it and struggle. You had to pay for it. But as soon as you pay for it, 
They just tapped in there right. and gave you your beer. <laughs> oh, what I'm, I said that to say this. We can tap into Jesus anytime. anytime. That's why, see, before I, I had to, because I didn't know any better, I had to go to the bar to have happy hour because it was on tap and I became happy. Because I wasn't happy until I got there because of my bills, you know, people. So I, I said, I got to get happy. So I went to happy hour and they had some stuff on tap that made me happy. But now I'm in Christ. Glory to God, hallelujah. It's on tap. It's on tap. I said, that happiness, that joy, that joy, that wisdom, I can tap into the wisdom. I can tap into the knowledge. I can tap into the success. It's on tap. Money's on tap. Healing's on tap. Wisdom's on tap. Hallelujah. Let me help you, some of you singles. They want to mingle. You want another, you want a wife or a husband. It's on tap. I said it's on tap. Huh? It's on tap. He'll show you where she's at. He'll show you where he's at. Oh, it's on tap. Just ask him. He'll be happy hour. See, because you don't, you, a, a person in their mind don't have sense enough to know what kind of woman belongs to him. A, a, a man doesn't have enough sense for, don't, what, that she's the one. No. A woman doesn't have enough sense to say that's the one. No, no, no. How do you know? Just go to the divorce courts. They're full of them. Why? Because she said, she said, he said. <laughs> Three years later said, is she not it? He's not it. Why? Because you went by your... You went by how she smelled, he smelled, what she looked like. I thought this was about Easter. No, it's about your life. That's why he died. So you won't have to say, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I think that's Flo. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'm going to marry Joe. No, no, no. No, no. He's spending time with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If the Bible says, because what he did on the cross, he said, ask and you shall receive. How did I get into this trouble? You didn't ask me. You didn't ask me. Don't ask mom. Don't ask dad. Ask daddy. In the name of Jesus. I said, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. See, our life is hidden in him. Hallelujah. So we're moving out now of the realm. We're, re we're living that realm of bondage and we're now in the realm of liberty. Yes. I said we're in the realm of liberty because he came off the cross. Yes. When he, what? Nobody forced him. No. They laughed at him. He said, if you're the son of God, come on down. Oh. Not yet. Uh -huh. I'm not ready to give up my life. Remember I told you when Jesus said, no man takes my life. Why? I won't let him. I'm not giving you permission. I'm giving you permission. Did you, you didn't put me on the cross. My dad told me, I'm just obeying my father. Go down and get on the cross for Joseph Rodriguez. So, so God, God permitted, Jesus permitted himself to be put on the cross. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, if God can open up the Red Sea, if God can stop the, the earth from rotating, for one man to, to finish the battle. Can you see that? Now that's the kind of God I serve. And he says to me. He says to you and I. He said I did this for you. Now trust me. That I can do all things. That you can do. I went to the cross. You don't have to be sick no more. You can if you want to. But see Jim Jesus said. Watch what Jesus said. As he is. As my father is. So am I in this world. Because one man said, I need to see the God. He said, just look at me. What does God look like? Look at Jesus. I said, look at Jesus. And Jesus said, as I am, as he is, so am I in this world. And, and I'm going to tell you the truth. Not because I have to tell you. The, not because I'm telling you the truth is truth. The truth that I'm telling you was truth before I told you the truth. See, not because I speak the truth is truth. 
Because I, I'm, what I'm speaking is what the Father said. And since, since the Father is truth, and he never had a beginning, so the truth that I'm giving to you was truth before I gave it to you. So it's not truth because I'm speaking it. It's truth because God said it's truth. What, what do you mean by all that? He said you're blessed. Yes. But you have to believe it. Yes. He said you, you, you have long life. You don't have to die tomorrow, next week. You can die whenever you feel like it. Now that's truth if you believe it. I can pay all your bills because I, I, I know what your bills are. I know how much money you got in your pocket. Yeah. I, I know that. I can pay them off if you can believe me. Yeah. Yes. Can I say something? Just repeat something. Has God ever called making an announcement in the universe that he needed help to feed the birds this year? No. Has he ever announced to us that he needs some money to feed the animals? No. no huh? He's never asked man to help That's him right. feed the fish in the sea, huh? Never, never. never has. Never. And he's been doing it for thousands of years. So what makes you think he can't pay your bills off? <laughs> he said, well, I, I don't know. See, and he will not because, see, you don't believe it. You don't believe it. You've got to believe it. If we would believe it, all of us here, oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you seeing See, all that he did for us. It's not an Easter message. It's a now message. It's a now message you take to live in your now. Take it now and live it tomorrow. Live it next week, the week after the week, and the week and the week and the week after next. But you have to believe it. Because as soon as you walk out this door, he says, okay, that was good. I'm, I'm hungry, ma. See? See? They didn't believe it. They believe it. So you got to believe it. I have to believe it. And it's okay we go out and, and, and eat. But say, wow, Lord, you did all that for me? I say, yeah. Thank God the cross is empty. Thank God it's empty, huh? And no man killed Jesus. Because he said, I won't give you permission. So to prove it, he said, I'll show you you can't kill me. He said, Father, into, my, into your hands I commend my spirit. Take care of the spirit. Watch over it. So his spirit left his body, went in, down into hell. Went down into hell. But he didn't go. See, that was the biggest, biggest con that ever happened. They pulled the wool over Satan's eyes. Because Joseph Rodriguez was supposed to go down into hell. Because, see, you know why Jesus, they had to let Jesus go? Because no one can go into hell unless he done something wrong. And Jesus never did something wrong. So there was a man in hell, see, and he wasn't supposed to be there. It was illegal for Jesus to be there. And that's why the Holy Spirit could quicken Jesus and say, let's go because it's illegal. But if Joseph would have been down there, see, it would have been legal. And Jesus said, they got me down here. They blew it. So... Now, because we, we got it over there, he said, now, I came down here for Joseph Rodriguez, and he didn't know it, and I did it. I saved Joseph. Now, if I go up there now, maybe, I don't know if he will, but one day I, it's going to be presented what I did for him, and he's going to say, I don't believe in that stuff. There ain't no God. There's a God by all this all this murders and rapes and why divorce and, and why food and why babies blowing up with their heads, their heads to see them. If there's a God, I don't believe, get that garbage out of here. See? But he didn't, he didn't give up on me. You mean you really talk like, oh yeah, oh yeah. But one day, one day in 1975, on the curb in Torrance, California, I met him. Hallelujah. I didn't meet a preacher. Not, not against him. I met Jesus. But Jesus said, son, now you're going to want to do it your way, huh? But you can't. Here's the way I set it up. I set the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, and the evangelist. And I called them to teach you. And if you listen to me, I'll send you to the right one. Don't you choose the one you want, because you ain't got sense enough to choose anything. That's right, that's right. He said, but you let me, you show me who you, who you are to go to. And you go sit there and listen to the, to the God inside the man. Because if not, son, you're going to hell and into the lake of fire. And so I sought the Lord. 
One day he sent me. He said, the one that will help you stay in out of trouble and get to heaven is Kenneth e. Hagan. And then there's another man called Pastor, his name is Doyle Harris. He said, Joe, I know they're not Mexicans. <laughs> See, because he knows there's a little bit of prejudice yes, in all of us, know. even though we don't admit it. Yeah. Prejudice in all of us. <laughs> he said, oh yeah, by the way, they're not Mexicans. And by the way, they're not white either. By the way, they're spirits just like you. They're spirits. And they're going to get you spiritual food because I came off the cross. So allow the Holy Spirit, as I give you this last thing today, the Holy Spirit that lives in you. And let Jesus Christ be real big in you. Give him a place in your life. Good to see you, Pastor. I saw you back there, son. And what you have to do today, do it today. You got you to gotta go to the throne. Go boldly to the throne and sit on God on his lap. Yes. Sit on daddy's lap and say, Father, I want to thank you. Because when Jesus, my Savior and my brother, yes. came off the cross, went down to hell for me and came up, say this to him, I am more now, I am more than a conqueror. Yeah. I'm blessed. In the city and blessing the field, and I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out. And Lord, I'll never, I'm never ever going to go into hell or lake of fire. Father, I thank you that all things are possible. And tell him and say, Lord, I want to thank you that Satan's under my feet. I, I, I said, Lord, see this body? You live in there? I'm not going to give it to no whore. I'm not going to give it to some pimp. I love them, I love them, but I'm not going to let this body get into another body because you said that when if I take my body and take it with a prostitute I now become that prostitute Amen. I become one with them because the body is now intertwined it's one body and two body inside one another and now so if she's a whore I'm a whore he said that's right son Amen. so so don't 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 take your body and be with some whore because see I'm inside of you yet and don't you love me and respect me enough not to take me to some whore or, or to some whoremonger, some man. Don't do that, son. I, I came off the cross for you. So, so reverence me. Realize, son, I live in you. Be, be, be aware of who lives in you 24-7. Not just when you go to church. Not just when you're praising in, in church. He said, son, but I'm with you when you're talking to a rank sinner. Yeah. I, I, I'm in you when the rank sinner is talking to you. Yeah. I, I'm in you when the person is telling you off. I, I'm right inside of you, son. Yes, That's why I came off. And the reason I'm inside of you because I don't want you, see, because I, can't, I haven't told nobody. I don't even know, says Jesus, when I'm coming for you. And you might be in that place where they, get, they offend you so much that you start cussing and doing it. And that, at that moment, the rapture happens, son. Don't, don't mess it up, son. I came for you so you'd make the rapture. Because in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, see, I'm coming. A, what is the twinkling of an eye? If you twinkle, it's too, it's too slow. I'm talking about an atomic twinkle. And when you do that, he says, everything will be changed. Your body will be changed immediately, like mine. Now, while your body's being changed, like mine, he said, now I have to get all the people's gra the graves that were, the people there in the graves. And then I have to take the people that are, see, died in me, in the Lord, I have to bring them up. But while you're waiting, as they're going up, remember, you're just like me, your body said. And then he said, now you can come back with me. And then you come up there and have a party. He said, you ever seen those T-shirts where it says, I'm a party animal? They don't know what party is. <laughs> because there's going to be a party for seven years. Now think about this party for seven years. Think, think about it. Think, think, think about this party for seven years. Thank you, son. Watch. We don't know how many billions of people have gone to heaven. And God's not going to run out of food. Seven billion. Seven billion people for seven years. And then God said, okay, you guys party, but I got to do something. I'm going to call 
everything, consummate everything. Yeah. And then he, he said, Satan, come here. I'm going to bound you for 1,000 years. Chain you up for 1,000 years. What do you got, son? Go ahead. For 1,000 years, he's going to bind Satan. Then for 1,000 years, he's going to bring some saints. For 1,000 years, we're going to witness to every sinner. We're going to be here on earth for 1,000 years. 1,000 years, called the millennial reign because we ain't coming on the cross. And we're going to be leading people to the Lord, and there's people going to be rejecting the Lord. And then finally, after a thousand years, he said, come here, Satan, I'm going to let you lose one more time. Because Jesus can't make nobody accept him as Lord against their will. So they're going to say, you know what, Satan's going to come and deceive them too, just like he's deceiving some people. And then when God said, okay, it's over, no more. Oh, it's, everything's over now. Now Satan, demons, all the people in hell come up to heaven. Yeah. And all you Christians, us, he said, no, no, you go over to the beam of seat of Christ, but all these people, sinners, demons, he said, you come over here to the white throne judgment and bow before my father. And they all bow, and now bow to the name of Jesus. And they all bow, and they say, okay, it don't count, though. Meaning it doesn't count for you being saved. So go over to the lake of fire. See, the, the, the time that it counts to bow to the name of Jesus is now. And, and I don't mean just this, I bow to you, Jesus. No, no, no. To bow for what it stands for. That means he's now in charge. Aren't you glad he's in charge of us? I, I said, aren't you glad he's in charge of us? See, that's a, that's a little bit of what I got from the Holy Spirit to tell you this is what Easter means. And because of what it means, you know, just a little bit that I do have, now we can go out and celebrate and while we're eating dinner. We're, we're saying, oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, while you might taste that food that don't have enough salt, say, oh, but Jesus, I'm saved. Or you might taste that food that's got too much salt, and say, oh, I'm so glad. Or, or you might, the hamburger might got a little burnt, but you say, oh, but I'm still saved because of what Jesus did on the cross. You know, oh, it's not hot enough like in Miami, but oh, I'm so glad I'm saved. Amen. See, let's look to the spiritual realm, then everything else outside will look so good. So and so's late again, but oh, I'm saved. You know how we have those in the family. Man, we're hungry as can be, man. Our, our stomachs are going, rum, 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 rum. <laughs> but this time when, when it's rumbling, just say, I'm so glad I'm saved. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. Happy, happy, happy Easter. Ah, I, I thank you, Jesus. How many have here have got another chance, had a second chance? A second chance. Second marriage, but it's greater than the first one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> the second marriage is better than the third. The third one's better than the second. You don't have to get up, but it's still greater. Huh? Isn't that wonderful? And it's all because whew, he came off. He came off and he's making us look good. I thank him from the bottom of my heart. And again, happy Resurrection Day. He's risen, but see, he's not the only one that...